what makes some of us average, makes some of us good, some of them great, is not the family you was born into. I right? have nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with your social economic status. It has everything to do with how you command your life. What causes that switch to flip? The overdrive, the full on destroyer. It's a thing that allows you to go the extra distance to dig just a little bit deeper and push a little harder, get after it. So when it doesn't make sense to go on, that's when you gotta use your emotion. That's when you gotta use that anger, that frustration, that fear to push yourself harder, to push yourself to say, I don't stop. It's possible. I'm blessed and highly favored. I've got a lot going for me. I got some good stuff in me. And it's possible that I can bring my greatness out here in the universe. That I can do what I want to do. It's possible I can write my own book. I can have my own business. I can take the trip and travel around the world. It's possible I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible regardless of where I am, the things can get better for me. It's possible. The war that you have to really fight is the war against yourself. Now, it's not easy to look in the mirror and to change your own life. It's hard as hell. You have to take responsibility. You have to learn new things. You have to feel uncomfortable. Good, because discomfort is how we grow. That's how we become strong. If you run away from discomfort and resistance your whole life, you will always be weak. If you want to grow as a person, you really have to make friends with pain. Embrace the discomfort. Enjoy the struggle. You got to come out your comfort zone because your comfort zone is the deadliest place you will ever be. You should never feel comfortable. You should be happy and dissatisfied. Anybody ever tell you be satisfied with what you got? Don't believe them. Get them away from you. Don't let anybody tell you, hey man, you should just be happy with... You see, the line that divides the ordinary from the extraordinary isn't drawn by your origins or possessions. Instead, it's defined by how you maneuver through life, the manner in which you assert control. There's a spark within you that urges you to strive harder, delve deeper, and transcend the easy path. When the going gets tough, it's your emotions that come to the fore. Harness that passion, that vexation, that yearning to propel yourself onward. Always remember that greatness is within reach. You are endowed with talent, capability, and the potential to author your own narrative, to construct your own dominion, to embark on global exploration. Welcome the challenges, for they are the crucible in which growth occurs. Fear need not hinder you. Your strength is greater than you imagine. No! You should double your business. Triple it! You should never be satisfied with what you got. Because the attempt to get more makes you into something better. You have the power to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Don't underestimate yourself. You don't know enough about yourself to become a cynic. And so you've got to challenge yourself to access that power that you have within you. You're more than a conqueror. If you want to be wealthy and happy the rest of your life, just learn this lesson well. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Until your mind is open to the possibilities that I can do this, you would never be able to do it. Once the mind starts to believe it can be achieved, only then does it start to break down tactically how we can do this. Until then, you're going to always lose. My number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You got to be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, no boss can do it. You versus you. Some of you, you wait for a tragedy to happen. You don't think about it. You don't forecast. Listen to me very closely. You got to understand something. And the difference between beasts and average people is that average people live from check to check. Average people don't think about their future. They're consumed with the presence. 50% of women is showing up for the fight. The fight is half over when you show up. You'll never win a fight you don't show up for. I'm showing up for this. Here I am ready for duty. I am through hiding in the shadows for fear that I might fail. I'm going to face this head on and let the chips fall where they may. You've got control of how you fight. But the minute you put him in your mind, he will start robbing your mind of your peace, of your sanity, of everything that God has given you. Tell somebody, take control of your mind.
That means that it was not him that was robbing me of the moment. It was me that was robbing myself of the moment because I was thinking about what he could possibly do and he hasn't done it. I'm entertaining what he could do. Some of you are in a fight simply because of how you think. When you have a dream, the one thing you have to watch out for are those out there that will try to crush your dream. And you cannot allow that to happen. That is your biggest challenge. So I challenge you to have your dream, go after it with all you have, and uh, be legendary in your own right. You watch those nature documentaries on the cable? See the one about lions? Look at this lion. He's the king of the jungle. Huge mane out there. He's laying down under a tree in the middle of Africa. He's so big, he's so hot, he doesn't want to move. Now, the little lion comes, they start messing with him, biting his tail, biting his ears. He doesn't do anything. Lioness, she starts messing with him, coming over, making trouble. Still, nothing. Now, the other animals, they notice this, and they start to move in. Jackals, hyenas. The true skirmish, my friend, is the one waged within the confines of your own mind, transforming your life, uprooting ingrained habits, and venturing beyond familiar bounds are far from straightforward tasks. Nonetheless, they are imperative. Cherish discomfort, for progress dwells amidst the trials. Refuse to acquiesce to mediocrity. Spur yourself onward to achieve greater heights, to embody a grander vision. Pay no heed to those who would have you content with your current state of affairs. Continue to reach for greater heights as it is through relentless pursuit of excellence that one becomes an improved version of oneself. Maintain faith in your abilities, pose challenges to your own limits, and never undervalue the vast potential that resides within you. The barking at him, laughing at him. They nip his toes and eat the food that's in his domain. They do this and they get closer and closer and closer until one day that lion gets up and tears the shit out of everybody, runs like the wind, eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Start moving. It's not going to be a perfect plan, but take action. Action that moves you in a positive direction. And if it ends up being the wrong direction, that's fine. At least you've learned where not to go. One of the most important things, never quit. And I've seen people quitting. And if they would have held out longer, they would have been successful. I've seen it so much. I've seen some of the most brilliant people in the world that never made it because they were quitters. They were just quitters. They would quit. They just couldn't take it. They couldn't whatever. One of the things about loving what you do is that it's not work and therefore you don't quit automatically. It's a lot easier not to quit, but you can never give up. So many people never achieve their goals because they have too many toxic, negative, energy draining people in their lives. And you have to have goals outside of your comfort zone that will challenge you because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. I want you to see yourself doing what you want to do, experiencing what you want to experience, having what you want to have, doing what it is that gives your life some meaning and value. Operate out of your imagination, not your memory. Because whenever you look at where you want to go, I'm wanting to warn you, you will have some conversation back here after you go through the data that you've experienced in life saying you can't do it. And so what you want to begin to do is ignore that inner conversation. The reins of destiny must rest firmly within your grasp. Surrender neither to fear nor doubt, for it is time to embody your strength and chase after your aspirations with unwavering resolve. Hurdles and stumbling blocks shall arise, but you must persist maintaining your forward momentum. 
In the face of adversity, remain steadfast and undaunted. Carry on with the struggle with your faith undimmed and your objectives ever in focus. Create an environment of positivity around you, populating it with individuals who elevate and champion your ambitions. And remember, failure is not a dead end, but merely an additional stride along the path that leads to triumph. Nobody who ever ran the Olympics and trained and worked out and finished and crossed the finish line effectively got there because they felt like working out. Your feelings will never cooperate with your dreams. Beat your feelings into captivity because when you beat your feelings into captivity, that is what discipline is. You got to bet on you. You believe in everybody else, you clap for everybody else, you support everybody else, you baking cakes and making cooking for everybody else. But when are you going to look in the mirror and believe in the darn person you see? It's about time for you to believe in you because you got it. You can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. You are stronger than you realize. You don't know enough about yourself to be a cynic. They're winners, they're losers. And there are people who have not discovered how to win. It's an urge. Truth be told, every champion has felt it. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge. I have never met anybody who became incredibly successful in any area of their life until they had suffered and sweated and sacrificed and kept their focus and fought through tears and trials and tests. And if you have a dream and you commit to it, it will come to pass. Get out. Act like you're playing basketball. Act like you're playing football. Compete. I need compete. Go to class. I just left the school telling these kids, act like you play football. Go in that dog classroom. Compete. Many of you have lost your competitive edge. Get your competitive edge back. I'm not against no other motivational speaker. I'm just competitive. There's going to be things that go on that are out of your control. The worst thing you can do is let something that's out of your control control you. Get control of yourself. Get control of your emotions. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. Instead, stay calm and figure out how to move forward. The greatest version of you is not the I can do anything version of you. The greatest version of you is the disciplined version. Of you. The greatest version of you is the version that has parameters. No, I don't do that. I don't drink that. I don't go there with these people. I'm focused. I have a prize that's in front of me. I have fixed my eyes on Jesus. I know what I'm supposed to do and that ain't it. I have to stay right here. It's the version of you that has parameters. I'm not scared that some kid's gonna take my spot. If he does, he's gonna have to do it with sweat. He's gonna have to do it with tears. He's gonna have to do it with blood. He is going to have to get up at 2.30 in the morning. If he can get up every day at 2.30, he deserves to take my spot. Some people are taking your spot and they shouldn't take it, but because you're an average, it's easy to take your spot. It's easy to get to the place before you get there. It's easy to take that client before you get to me. It's easy to beat you while you average. Everybody wants to be a beast till it's time to do what beasts do. If you could change the way you wake up in the morning, stop saying, I got to go to work. I got to work out. I got to get this weight off of me. I got to go and meet with the people at the school. I got to deal with my coworkers. Change one word in that sentence and everything about your life changes. I get to wake up in the morning. I get to go to work. I get to go and meet with these people today. When you say I got to, you take all of your opportunities and all of your blessings and you wrap them up in stress by saying I got to. You take all the stress off of it when you say I get to. Listen to me very closely. I love the sun, but things don't grow because of the sun. You have to have some rain and you've got to stop looking at rain in your life as something bad. Let me tell you something. The greatest ideas that have ever come to me did not come when I was on a cruise. I've had my greatest ideas. I had my greatest ideas in my darkest nights. I had my greatest ideas when I went through the most pain that I've ever gone through. My greatest moments didn't come from my greatest moments. My greatest moments came from my greatest defeats because it was during my defeat 
that I had to find a way to get back up. I will change the way I look at defeat. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. Success, while it's good and it's our aim, it does not necessarily grow us in certain areas. We need defeat. Being me is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not in my suits. You can get suits like me, but they won't make you stand like me. I fought my way up. I fought to get to work. I fought to get up on my feet. I fought to stand. I fought to carry on. I fought to love. I fought to live. I fought to get out of the bed. I fought with my fears, my doubts, my anxieties, my insecurities. I fought with haters, liars, backbiters and betrayers. I even had to fight with family. And many times I laid in the bed. I couldn't go to sleep because I was fighting with myself. I fought. Therefore, my friend, do not allow the vicissitudes of life to cast you down. Rise again, brush yourself off and forge ahead with renewed vigor. The resilience to surmount any obstacle lies within you. Preserve discipline and concentration and permit your dreams to guide you. You possess the potential to ascend to heights of achievement that surpass even your most extravagant visions. Embark on your journey, be unwavering, be invincible, and under no circumstances yield to despair. 